Hey guys, Daniel James here, and today uh, what we're going to be doing is something a little bit different from normal. So uh, as some of you know, at this current time of recording this video, I have um, packed up my studio and I have moved to Tokyo. Um, the main reason for this was to kind of get out of my comfort zone a bit and, uh, you know, see what I could I could achieve when, you know, I don't have as many tools and, uh, you know, I don't have the big rig I have back in the United Kingdom. So one of the things... Um, I wanted to do is do what I'm calling a nomad series of videos where basically I'm going to be looking at um, software and hardware which uh, you know which I find useful for my studio on the road so my current rig is very small and uh, and this first uh, this first like episode this first video taking a look at um, something I find particularly useful uh, with my setup on the road and that is my UAD Apollo twin um, I really recommend you you look you know look that up online. Uh, but it, essentially, what a UAD uh, twin is is an audio interface, and what it allows you to do is essentially put um, where well, it allows you to use plugins that are designed specifically for it, and they run on the hardware, so they don't take up your CPU or well, if they you know. I assume it takes up some CPU actually loading it in at all. But the processing of the actual plugins are done on the unit itself. And I found this infinitely useful because I'm on the road, you know, because I need a portable rig. The rig I currently have is a MacBook Pro. Uh, so, you know, it, it only has 16 gigs of RAM and two point, uh, it's a quad core 2.8 gigahertz um, CPU. So that extra offloading of, um, resources onto a, a separate hardware unit is is invaluable to me so one of the things I've actually decided to do is I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be going through uh, all the UAD plugins not all of them all the ones that I particularly find useful as you can see I've got this in demo mode at the minute so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demo plugins and any of the ones I find that are particularly useful for me um, either for creative reasons or for mixing reasons you know like obviously when you're mixing you need compressors eqs such and such and if i can offload those onto the hardware unit of the apollo twin you know that's that's just going to mean that i can push my productions further even when i'm on the road so today's video sorry for that long-winded introduction but today's video um we're going to be taking a look at this plugin here this is the moog multi-mode filter and it's essentially um, just your basic, not your basic, but it's it's a multi-mode filter. I mean, go figure, that's what it's called. Uh, so I've actually been using this quite a lot in the, you, you get, uh, I think it's 14 day, no, you get seven days, or it's either 14 or seven day demo. I've been using this a lot recently. Uh, and most most of the time when I when I use plugins, I use, um, I use an auto filter, like the built-in Ableton one. And whilst it sounds great, I've actually enjoyed uh, using using something a bit different for a change. So I'm going to show you how I've been using this. So what I've done here is I've loaded up a short little uh, just drum loop, something that was really big and heavy, because that's usually how I, you know, how I use filters. So if I just show you what it sounds like without the filter on. So as you can hear, just really dirty and, you know, borderline distorted, which is, you know, for the projects I was using it on, actually makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the filter on and let's take a look at how it actually sounds, um, how the cutoff uh, sounds itself, because obviously every filter's got like a slightly different tone. So let's take a listen to the tone of the Moog multi-mode filter. Here we go. So as you can hear, it's got a nice smooth edge to it. Now I'm going to put it on four pole, and for those of you who don't know what two pole, four pole means, I will explain what what all the things do. But two pole and four pole is essentially uh, the easiest way to show this. Actually, is is with this. Uh, so if you take a look, um, sorry, not the filter, the EQ. Uh, if you take a look down here, so if I if I have this, this kind of curve is kind of what a two pole is. Okay, so it's it's a kind of longer longer curve on you know the frequencies you're cutting out so if i was to show you uh, a two you know like a two pole cut it's essentially doing this whereas a four pole cut is like this you see it's a much steeper drop off so there are times when you want to um when you want to actually you know cut off the sound but you don't want it to be quite as aggressive as this Because 
because when you get to you know when when you're cutting off that amount of frequency at the top end you're kind of losing the drive with certain sounds not all sounds some sounds you definitely want a four pole but there are some sounds so like for example these drums where i still kind of want some of the highs to poke through a little bit so you get the vibe or the feel of the drum you know So as you can hear, it's, it's a very subtle difference, but you know it allows it to be a bit more open in terms of the sound. So let's take a look at the uh, the resonance style. And resonance is basically, <laughs> it's so much easier to show on, on a different thing. Good old Ableton plugins, uh, auto filter. So it essentially does this. So resonance will push the peak up like this, okay? As you can see, the good visual representation. So let's do it again. <laughs> You may recognize sounds like this, you know, from old sci-fi type films, you know, this kind of... And now sometimes like high resonance, things like that um, are good, but usually when you're driving something. So let me just quickly try and drive this a little bit. When when it's when it's overdriven, you know, you occasionally get more of a more of a I don't know how you describe it, like a uh, like a whistling sound, and it kind of makes more sense because because the whistle's kind of crunched as well. You know, it's uh, it's a cool tone. Anyway, I make a lot of use of that. So if we come down to the bottom here, you get your envelope. Uh, so envelopes you can see like on the Ableton one here, you have attack, release, and uh, you know, or you yeah you have volume, attack, and release. Whereas this one, you just get the dial which is actually pretty cool. So if I push it to the right, what it'll do is when something uh, over, you know, when something goes over like the built-in threshold, what it'll do is it'll actually, uh, it'll push, it'll open the filter. So again, like just using this. So let's say something loud goes through, this will push open. Okay, so if I, if I play it. So you see, the louder the transient, the more it pushes the filter open. So if I move it like really high. So as you can see here in the waveform, you see how it gets uh, quieter in this section. So listen, the filter will be open here and as it gets to here, it will close down. But also, um, you can do this in reverse, which is actually really cool. So what it's doing is whenever it gets loud, it actually closes the filter. Or not. Oh wait, yeah, there we go, I need to do this. Which is actually a technique, like say you're trying to layer in um, like a kick drum, for example, uh, with, you know, like a bass guitar or something. You could side chain it, or you could maybe use it like, a, you could automate an envelope thing to come in. you know, to, to drag the filter down instead. You know, there's cool things you can do. And I also, again, I like uh, I like the sound of it when it's overdriven. Actually, I, t I take that back. I like the sound of it overdriven after the effect. You know, so like if, I don't know, I p I'm just going to put something random on. I'll just put a random distortion unit on it quick. But like, I like taking these and then overdriving them. But yeah, um, so that's what the envelope does. And you have two options for the envelope. You have fast and smooth. So this is more like the, uh, the corrective adjustments like I was mentioning earlier. So I'll pull this down. And 
And then you have this step track. Um, it doesn't really do anything audible to my ears. Um, I believe it changes the uh, the resolution at which the filter is working. You see, it, it does nothing really audible, but I believe it changes uh, the uh, yeah the, the resolution at which it's it's filtering the the information. So not really much. Um, need to change that very often in my opinion so i'm just gonna leave it there. so yeah let's move on to this spacing one what this does is it independently filters the left and right so you, it, you end up basically uh almost panning so when i do this the right ear like if you're wearing headphones or you've got speakers on the right ear will um okay so it's not actually panning left and right it's just filtering one side so when i do this it means my right ear it, the filter's going open on my right ear and it's closing on my left which is a really cool effect so um then of course you have your your low pass your mid uh, your band pass and then your high pass. So let's go to the band pass. And of course, high pass is very good, like if you're doing corrective things. do now is I'm just going to put back on low pass for a second. As we move over, as we move over to the LFO section. So I'm just going to put this down on a four pole. So it's barely audible. So the LFO works as a section. So you have your amount. So that's how much of the LFO is applied to uh, the calf. And it is assigned to the calf, just so you're aware of that. Uh, and then you have free and sync. I always have mine synced. So then it goes to your uh, host tempo. You see I'm at 120 here. So this is, you know, every five bars but so i'm going to move this up to something a bit more usable like one sixteenth maybe can we find a one there we go one sixteenth so you see you've got your rate there and then what you what you've got is you've got sh uh, your shapes so let's say i wanted like some you know pulsing thing you know i'll put it on like a sawtooth down And as you can hear, that's like this is one of the things I'm absolutely loving about the Moog and why I'm using it over the auto filler is it's actually got a really cool, like, authentically analog kind of tone uh, to the actual sound. I mean, if you listen to this again, it's got the right amount of thuddiness. Or, of course, if you want to do like some rising up thing. Uh, if I put this on half bar. And then, of course, like if you throw like some delay on that. already got like some cool rhythmic things going on and again high pass. we can slow that down again maybe and we can have it go in and out you know with our sine wave And then we have a 
square wave, which is good for the more rhythmic ones. One thing, and then of course random. What I tend to do with random is I'll uh, I'll let it play over the top of the loop I've done and let it just loop a, lo a bunch of stuff and then I'll slice out the cool sounding ones. Because occasionally you will get one that sounds cool. Uh, the offset here is... So it kind of offsets one from the other, so you get this weird kind of widening sound. So I usually just keep that centered. Uh, one of the cool things though, say, let's say for example you have... You know, something really like, you know, just aggressive like that, full on amount. What you actually have here is you have a mix style, so you can actually um, layer in this sound with the original sound. So I'll pull that back so we can hear how it adds. Even though the, the track is already rhythmic, I'll be adding the 16th note uh, cutoff sound to the overall thing. So you you know you can get really rhythmic uh, and really interesting sounds with that. So I'm just going to change this back to uh, like the half time, no, the half bar. Where is it? Where? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. So you're getting this kind of in the middle, but I'm going to make that a two. Bar. You know, so you can add some cool things there. And, and then it has this button here, mono stereo. So this just turns everything mono. Which is particularly cool, like if you have a reverb set up. Because um, I, I do like... It kind of, yeah, obviously it monos the sound, but like throwing a mono... I have a certain kind of love for some reason for mono sounds, particularly like this. So I'm going to leave it mono for a while actually. And then here we have this plus 20 button and this is good for if you want to get some really distorted kind of tones out of it, you know, you really want to push that Moog over saturation sound. I mean, this is what it sounds like without the mix. I do like to pull out, particularly when we're getting rhythmic.
So as you can hear, you can really get those, um, you know, those really moogy <laughs> is the I know it's moog by the way but moog it looks moog so I call it moog but you know the moog you can really get that moog tone and yeah and like I say uh, this this was one of the uh, one of the main plugins so far that I've just kept going back to so whenever I've needed a filter I've actually pulled this up because whilst you know like I you know the Ableton one has all these features this has it's hard to explain it's, it's like it, it feels like an analog filter it actually feels like a moog filter the resonance has got the right kind of tone to it when you drive it super hard you know it does sound a little bit nasty and saturated which i actually love about the thing and so you know and to have all those effects um you know to, to have all that control and that tone offset from my cpu you know to an external piece of hardware is absolutely amazing, particularly for me with my laptop setup. Um, you know, because it's not using any extra CPU, so the CPU usage is low. Um, there is a different uh, version that comes with uh, with it called the SE, which is essentially the exact same thing. Uh, the only difference I can really uh, discern is that the the input is called gain and drive. They don't sound particularly different. I will. Uh, I'll just quickly. Um, delete this one and we'll we'll have a quick play with this one uh, but as far as I'm aware this one just uses less of the external hardware's CPU so the Apollo twin comes with its own CPU essentially built in and the CPU on that has you know obviously a limit so you can load a certain amount of plugins and you know uh, you can buy expansions to it but like for now I don't need to because I'm not using them particularly harshly but uh yeah let's just have a quick play with this see if as you can see, no no difference in the uh, in the tone. Yeah, and the other thing this one doesn't have is the plus 20 button here. So as you can hear, a very, very uh, good quality um, multi-mode filter. And like I say, if, if you, like me, you like to do your own sound designs, um, you know, you can throw almost any sound source at something like this, whack it through a, you know, a sawtooth um, running 16th or something, and you've got like an instant pulse. Like, like I did earlier when, you know, one of my little tricks just for you guys is put it on a slow one, you know, maybe like a, like a quarter note. and then throw that through a delay. And you end up with really cool rhythmic tones. So yeah, I hope uh, I hope you guys found this this uh, video uh, useful and you know at least a good look at the the Moog multimode filter here. There will be more plugins like this. Like I say, I'm going to be going through the entire UAD library and trying to find ones that um, I'm going to be using a lot. And I'm going to do a video on uh, on those ones, show you guys why I like it and how I'm using them. But yeah, this is this is uh, like I mentioned at the beginning. This is the first of my uh, Nomad series, so we're going to be looking at a few different things in these videos. But as for now, uh, I'm sticking with uh, like in terms of software, I'm going to be looking more at the plugins that I'm using as opposed to sample libraries because we've done those. But there will still be sample library videos and the such coming up, so uh, do not fret about that. They are coming. So yeah, I, thanks guys for watching today and I'll see you all in the next video.